So Blue Jays this week, vodcast Ben Ennis and Mike Wilner in St. Petersburg, Tampa, as the Blue Jays and Tampa Bay Rays continuing their series. And Mike, the 11-game winning streak is over. They couldn't extend it to 12. Oh, well, 11 games will have to do, I guess, tying the franchise record. What stood out for you the most over that 11-game stretch? I think the starting pitching more than anything else. And, well, and the bullpen. The bullpen gave up one run over the course of the entire uh, winning streak, I believe. And the, the starting pitching was just, just outstanding. Um, there were two, three games out of the 11, three, I think, in which the starting pitcher gave up more than one run. So uh, that, that was really, I mean, that's how you build long winning streaks when you get great starting pitching. And the Blue Jays really did. Yeah, and it was supposed to be the strength of this team uh, starting the season. It was pretty terrible to start the season. Now, even during that 11-game winning streak, R.A. Dickey wasn't spectacular. It was guys like Esmil Rogers, Chen Ming Wong that have been getting the job done. Now, uh, Esmil Rogers takes the loss in Game 1 of the Rays series, but Blue Jays, even when they're getting bad outings from their starters right now, and I don't know if you want to call that, that, that game on Monday a bad start from Esmil Rogers, kept him in the game, though, and they had a chance to tie it up late in that one. Yeah, I mean, it was it was his worst outing since joining the rotation, but really it wasn't that bad. I mean, mm -hmm. he gave up the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back home runs in the second inning and then just one more run and took it through six. It was not a good outing by any means, but it's not an outing in which you bury a team and it's he, it's done and it can't come back. They did bring the tying run to the plate twice in the ninth inning, uh, in the eighth inning, and it happened to be Jose Bautista and Edwin Encarnacion, who are two of the three guys you want up in those situations. So, yeah, by no means did he bury them. He just didn't have a typical great Blue Jays starter start as we'd seen over the two weeks. Yeah, and he is a surprise. First of all, wasn't expecting to be in the starting rotation for this Blue Jays team. Was expected to be a hard-throwing righty out of the bullpen, but he has started before with the, the Colorado Rockies. Has a, a, a pretty Terribly. decent fastball, but uh, Chen yeah. Ming Wong came completely out of nowhere, obviously. They pick him up the scrap heap in the New York Yankees minor league system. He comes in, doesn't have that sinker ball like he used to, but still throws in the low 90s. And once he started using those other pitches, he's really turned into an effective starter for the Blue Jays. He's had two, well, three really, really good starts. The first start only had one bad inning in it, and, and they still wound up winning that game. That was the one that started the win streak. And then uh, two more outings in which he's not allowed an earned run. And that that is, you're right, completely out of nowhere. They... You know, he wasn't. He was pitching well in AAA. He had an ERA around 2.30. But the Yankees had some starting pitching issues. They didn't call him up. The Blue Jays found him and and offered him the major league deal, which allowed him to get out of the contract with the Yankees. And here he is, and he's been fantastic. And who knows how long it'll last? I mean, he really hasn't had. He's had so many injuries and. Hasn't been an effective pitcher in the major leagues for a long, long time. But right now, they're riding it, and they're loving every minute of it, and he's doing a great job. Yeah, why not? Uh, an 11-game winning streak, getting them right back into the thick of things and over the 500 mark. Now, usually when you get the pitching, you don't get the hitting, or you get the hitting, you don't get the pitching. It's not very often that the two line up, and they did for the Blue Jays over that 11-game run. But one guy that really wasn't a constant during that 11-game stretch was Jose Bautista. Kind of bookended it nicely. Got them off to the nice start in, in tying that game up in Chicago that started it. But over that stretch there, he actually didn't perform up to his standard. So it's, it's kind of surprising that they were getting the offense from other places outside of Jose Bautista over that 11-game stretch. Yeah, you know what? And it's more than just Jose Bautista. It was Melky Cabrera, too. Melky Cabrera was terrible during the 11 game win streak uh, uh, you put the two of them together and they had a 244 on base percentage combined over the course of the 11 straight wins and and it's it's unfathomable almost that you can get no production at all from the first two hitters in your batting order and you can still go out and win 11 games and that speaks to how good Edwin was how good Adam Lind has been Colby Rasmus was doing well JP Aaron Sebia you know I, I know nobody likes to give him any credit but he's on like a nine game run where he's hitting over 400 uh Munori Kawasaki was tremendous. Mysore Asturias hit around 350. So almost everybody else, except for Bautista and Cabrera, were really major contributors offensively during the streak. But they started every game, it, it, it felt like, with uh, a couple of out and nobody on. Well, you mentioned Kawasaki. He is the subject of our Ford Leaders in the Field segment. Presented by the 2013 Ford F-150, Canada's Player of the Year for 47 years running.
All right, so I mentioned Kawasaki. He is the subject of our Ford Leaders in the Field segment. Now, Jose Reyes is going to be activated for that game on Wednesday, and probably by the time you're seeing this, the decision will have already be made uh, as far as Kawasaki's future. Now, he's the leader in the field as far as morale, Mike, and that's yeah. about it. He gets on base, especially uh, considering his batting average. He does a pretty good job of getting on base. Now, this decision, as I mentioned, will have already been made by the time you're, you're seeing this. But what do you think the Blue Jays should do with the return of Jose Reyes and Munenori Kawasaki? Is it back to AAA for him? It's funny. He's, he's right over there. He's like eight feet away from me. Let's see if we can get uh, Joel, who's doing a fine camera work, to just pan over and show he's being interviewed in Japanese right now, even though he's got the phrase book out. Um, uh, what are they going to do? I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, the the... The obvious choice, he's got options, is to send Kawasaki down. But he is a leader in the field and off, and the team has really rallied around him. Everybody loves the guy. Uh, he can play defense. He can give you a good at bat. He can steal a base. There are a lot of little things he can do. And, you know, do you need to have eight guys in the bullpen when your starting pitching is doing so well? I don't know. And also you have to remember that Jose Reyes is, is going to come back is he going to be capable of playing every day immediately? Maybe you do need Kawasaki around for a little bit longer to act as a backup shortstop, to be an extra pair of legs off the bench, especially since now Rajay Davis is going into left field in the seventh inning of every game uh, to, to take over for Melky, so you don't have Rajay to use him how you want when you need a stolen base. I wonder if they're not going to make a move from the bullpen, and I think if they do, it's going to be Juan Perez. Uh, he's out of options, it's true, so they would likely lose him on the waiver wire if they do put him um, on. If they, they would have to designate him for assignment to, to get him off the uh, roster, and they do need to make room on the 40-man roster for Jose Reyes because he's currently on the 60-day disabled list. So to me, I don't think they're going to, wave Dustin McGowan, even though that contract really makes it likely that they'll be able to get him through. With all they've invested in him over the last five years, seven years in time and everything, I don't think he's a guy that they would like to just see picked off the waiver wire. Neil Wagner has options. Aaron Loop has options. Neither of them deserve to go down. Juan Perez doesn't deserve to go down either, but Juan Perez is 34 years old. He's never had any sustained success in the major leagues. He looks like an elbow and shoulder injury just waiting to happen. And if he moves, then you've got seven in the bullpen, four righties, three lefties, which is a better balance than four lefties, three righties. And Kawasaki maybe stays up for a couple of weeks until Brett Laurie comes back off his rehab. I, I, I can see that happening. Yeah, that would stink for Perez because he has been yeah. nothing short of spectacular since he's uh, been in the major leagues with the Toronto Blue Jays. But they Jays, all but have. Every yeah, single reliever have. has been spectacular. Yeah, it's it's going to be a tough decision, whatever it is uh, for the Toronto Blue Jays. But yeah, four relievers is uh, a luxury not a lot of teams in Major League Baseball have. We'll have to see how it plays out. Of course, you know it. You in the future, what has happened with the Toronto Blue Jays That's and the true. return of Jose Reyes. He's Mike Wilner. You can follow him on Twitter at Wilnerness590. You can follow me, Ben Ennis, on Twitter, on Twitter as well, at BennisSnet. You can follow the vodcast and podcast as well, at Jays This Week. We'll see you next week.